Praise Buddha, we've been expecting you. Welcome, weary travelers, to the Temple of Kung Fu. As always, I'm your host, the Shaolin Kid. And tonight's tale... <laughs> No matter what happens, I will not yield to you, and I promise you, I'll take your sword from you, or I'll die. Is duel to the death, or, yeah, duel to the death, sorry. Duel to the death. This film was released in 1983, a film by Ching Su Tong, if you haven't heard of him. He's a very, very legendary choreo action choreographer. Uh, he's done a lot of good things. If you don't know him, look him up. He's really good. But uh, this film is a wushu kung fu film. This film is about, essentially, so essentially the film is about these two guys, a Chinese guy and a Japanese guy, and they are representing their country, right, in a, a yearly duel, right, for... Uh, kind of national supremacy to who has the better reputation, right? If your guy wins, your country is hailed as the champions that year, and the country that loses, they're embarrassed and humiliated, and their reputation diminishes, right? And this happens every year. Uh, and China get their best guy, and Japan get their best guy, and they duel to the death, and whoever wins gives nation national supremacy. Um, by, like, kind of bragging rights, kind of. But, um, essentially this film is about two guys, the Japanese, the guy who the Japanese picked, and the guy who the Chinese picked, the Lord of the Sword. Uh, and also the Japanese guy, I think his name was Hayamoto or something like that? Sorry if I messed that up, I can't quite remember his name. But they were, like, the two main characters in the movie, and so it's kind of, like, about... So a lot of stuff happens in the movie, but mainly it's about a conspiracy. Uh, the Japanese are, like, kind of trying to cheat the system. Right? They're like using this master of a school uh, so that he can put his daughter in the duel in place of the Chinese guy. Well, they're also Chinese, but they're like on kind of payroll or like they're being used by the Japanese, by the Japanese making a deal with them and they're betraying China. So also the Japanese guy's going to, f was, they're planning on him throwing the fight. So essentially, there's two schools competing right now the Shaolin school, like the that that our guy, the Chinese rep representative, is from, right? But then there's the school below them, which is like the Holy Sword or something like that. They used to be the top school, right? But the Shaolin school overthrew them. So they are like, like betraying their country and conspiring with the Japanese so that they can rig the duel and make sure that they are on top again, right? So basically, you know, conspiring with the enemy, betraying the country so that they can be the top again the whole conspiracy and the Japanese guy the Japanese representative he doesn't want that right he just wants a fair fight and he doesn't want to throw a fight it's dishonorable right so eventually um the Japanese guy you know he fights them and he's like I'm not gonna let you get, go through with this right and he fights them and he kills all these ninjas and I'll get to the ninjas later but um he ends up killing all the evil Japanese guys and then eventually by the end of the movie the Japanese guy convinces the Chinese guy into finally doing the duel. Because, you know, the Japanese guy is like, you know, I must duel. This is what I trained for, right? I, I'm not just going to give up. You know, it's all about his code. Uh, and at the end of the movie, they go through an epic duel in which I suppose the Chinese guy wins, but he gets really badly injured, and they kind of leave it open-ended to whether did either of them survive. But I think the Chinese guy survived because, one, it's a Chinese movie, uh, and two... Uh, he did, he got his arm chopped off, and kung, like kung fu main characters, like kung fu movies like that, especially wushu, they can survive crazy shit, right? But the side characters, they can they drop like flies, they can die from anything. But the main character, no, it's gonna take a fucking seven nation fucking army to take them down, like the entirety of Asia to kill the main character in a wushu film. But yeah, um. So yeah, that's essentially the plot, and I think it was really good and really engaging. But uh, so let's 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 get so aside from the plot now. Let's get into the action, which was great. Lots of great wire work, 
uh, lots of great sword play. I really think that the film was really strong. I think some of the best fight scenes were the sword fighting. Obviously, most of the fight scenes were sword fighting. Uh, pretty much all of them were. Uh, and I think they were some of the best stuff in the movie. But I think the best part of this movie was the ninjas. Like I mentioned earlier, the ninjas are fucking insane. They will be anywhere they will go anywhere, right? They could, there was like a scene where there was like the daughter of the rival school who like was involved in the plan. Like they wanted her to be involved in the plan, whatever. She was there. She was like watching the ninjas like digging up a scroll from the ground. And she was like listening in, in, it, in on it. And the ninja just popped out of the, of the sand and started fighting her. And then there was another scene where at the end of the movie, the Japanese guy was fighting all the ninjas and the evil Japanese priest guy. And he cut a ninja in half down the middle. And he got cut in half. And then another ninja came out and got cut in half at the same time. There was a ninja hiding within the ninja. Then there was a ninja inside a tree. And there was like... They are everywhere. There was ninjas flying with kites. They were fucking crazy. Like, they could literally be anywhere. They're magic. They disappear into smoke like fucking Batman. It's just insane. And I highly recommend this movie just for the ninjas alone. They are probably the most batshit, unpredictable thing in this movie. Uh, I want more, like, wushu stuff like that. Just absolutely ridiculous, stupid stuff like the ninjas. But yeah... Overall, I thought the film was really, really enjoyable, and again, I would highly recommend it. If you want to have a good time, if you're a fan of kung fu films, definitely would recommend it. And even if you're not, I think this would be a really good place to start with Wushu, because it's not very, like, very hard to understand. I think it's really, really good, and definitely would recommend it. And with all that being said, I think I'd rate this film, like, a 7.5 out of 10. Really, really enjoyable. Definitely would recommend. And, um, yeah. I think I said all I need to say. I think it's my piece. So, guys, you know, thanks for stopping by the temple. Really appreciate the support. And, you know, while you're here, you might as well, you know, like, like, share with your friends, subscribe, to the notifications on, comment below on how much you liked it. And, as always, I've been the Shaolin Kid. Booty be praised. Freeze for mending! Whoa! These fucking ninjas. They could be inside your tea kettle. They could be inside of that and they could just pop out and just shh, chop your head off. So, you know, be careful because ninjas could be anywhere. Be safe around ninjas.